Welcome to the Steel Flyers All Sports Network special show for you folks. We got two very special guests because we're going to talk about a very special subject. That's right. We're going to get into the NHL playoffs and what we would like to see and what's probably going to happen. <laughs> so we got two very special guests with us today. And how about that? E-Money. How about that? Dropping in, my man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It feels good to be on spring break. And for those of you that aren't familiar with me, I have my own uh, podcast called On The Money. You can find it on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, um, a bunch of different um, podcast type apps. But awesome. I just do my stuff through Anchor. And uh, of course, I talk about hockey and I'll talk about pro football and I'll talk about UFC. So it's a little bit of a variety there. And yeah, I'm happy. Man. Thank you for having me. You got it, brother. You got it. So um, we'll be able to uh, supply all the links uh, for the shows there for for E Money and and how you can uh, find him and and watch all his great content. So for sure, hey, we got the pearls of wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. What up, buddy? How you doing, Perlo? I'm doing fantastic, man. Spending my days talking about hockey. That's, That's I right, love. man. Kicking back in the Seattle apartment there, looking good. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Just got it freshly squeegeed yesterday. <laughs> there you go. Cool beans, cool beans. All right. Uh, the reason why I have these two very special folks here with us today is because we were sitting down talking about the playoffs. That's right. We're talking about the NHL playoffs and the playoffs that are coming up uh, here real soon. I mean, yeah, we got the trade deadline in a couple weeks. But the end of the season is going to be just around the corner here. And teams are about, eh, on the average, 20 games away. Okay, But you're also starting to see teams separate themselves where you're seeing the top three teams starting to separate from the bottom rest of the, their divisions. Okay, um, So we're going to talk about the playoff scenarios that we're going to see in those divisions and then maybe what we would like to see and then what we, what we think is going to really probably happen. All right, so let's start off with everybody's favorite, and let's go with the Discovery Central. Hey, all right, that consists of Tampa Bay, Florida, Carolina as the top three. Then you get Nashville, the drop off of 10 points, Chicago, Columbus fighting for that four spot, Dallas and Detroit aren't even sniffing. Dallas could be because they have a lot of games in hand. All right, Evan, we're going to start with you, my man. What What do you think about this central division here? What do you think is going to be – what what playoff matchups would you like to see and what do you think is going to happen? All right. Uh, first off, I heard your dog bark, and I think your dog's getting excited for the playoffs oh, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The, the co-host is always ready. Yeah, and the hockey, the hockey dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but for real. Um, so it looks like the Lightning, the Panthers, who have been a big surprise this year, and the Hurricanes. It looks like they're all pretty much a shoe in for the playoffs, barring some sort of chaotic slump. And then that fourth spot is either going to come down to the Predators who I think a lot of people thought were going to be sellers at the deadline, but now it's like, okay, they might be buyers now. So they were kind of in that borderline territory. Um, Blackhawks are, are right in there. Columbus is, is right in there a little bit. I'm not going to count Columbus out. Um, Stars have kind of disappointed a little bit, and the Dead Wings are still a thing. So uh, the playoff matchups that I see will happen um, – <sighs> You know, it would be really awesome. I mean, it more than likely won't happen unless it gets to the second round. But I really like to see the Panthers and the Blackhawks because you would have Coach Q going up against his old team. Mm -hmm. And those two teams have also been kind of a surprise this year. A lot of people thought that the Blackhawks would be pretty bad this year going through the rebuild. They've had some injuries prior to the start of the season. And then, of course, like I said, Panthers were a surprise. Um, but it's looking like, and I, I think it'll be Panthers and Hurricanes in the first round to get it going. That would be a good matchup too. I guess the Lightning would beat um, either the Predators, Blackhawks, or the Jacket or the Jackets. Um, I think I kind of I kind of think the uh, the Blackhawks will slip in there and, and take that spot. Um, I think Kirby didn't Kirby Doc just come back, or he's coming back real soon. Yeah. He's back, yeah. And then Jonathan Taze will come back at some point, I'm sure, and 
uh, try to get this team uh, going. So, I mean, I think it'll be Lightning, uh, Blackhawks round one, and it'd be very hard not to favor the Lightning. And then Panthers and Hurricanes would be – an. I mean, there's so many good matchups. We could talk for hours about uh, what we would like and everything. So, Panthers yeah. and Hurricanes could be a round one. So, I'm curious to see how – the central plays out and who gets that number four. Yeah, so. that's that's going to be the key. Perlo, drop some wisdom on us here, buddy. What do you think about this central here? Uh, I think it doesn't get enough play. Yeah, people don't pay enough attention to this division. This division is absolutely fantastic. Uh, you, you're building some incredible rivalries here. Uh, even Columbus, uh, Florida with the whole Bob Brosky thing and the different players and Zito going over to Florida, yeah. even that, that would be a cool series. Just that alone. I, I doubt that Columbus is going to be able to come back, but I mean, they're only at 36 and you know, we've seen Tortorella teams bounce back from anything. So you could see it happen. Um, uh, as far as uh, Nashville, such an amazing story this year because of their, uh, turnaround and starting to come move forward and change there. They're a great story that would be fun to watch. I personally would, at this point, I would really rather see Nashville make it than Chicago simply because it's such a great story that it's such a great story. Chicago came out and said they were rebuilding anyways, and they've really been only making it for the most part on the back of Lankin and they've been outshot in a lot of their games. Pretty much, yeah. And that's, that's a great story, too. Don't get me wrong. Lankin oh, yeah. is amazing. But I, I think I just feel that Nashville at this point deserves it a little more. So I'd like to see Nashville make it in. Um, with all that being said, I don't think you can do anything but hope for a Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa Bay versus Florida. Yeah. Rival, rivalry. For that yep. rivalry to have a spotlight on it. Yep. And for those two teams to get exposure like that, to me – that's what I'm looking for here. I really battle want to Florida. See. Yeah, Battle All of right. Florida. I'm okay. so yeah, not going to lie those... to the public. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That to... would be cool. We're getting those juices flowing for that rivalry because it would be a great, like, two different systems, too. Tampa Bay's running gun of the big stars, and Florida's this grinded out, going to kick your butt yeah. type team. More physical. That was supposed to be there. Uh, I I think that would be just a fantastic. But I mean, Carolina as well against anyone. Just uh, like th that team is so fun to watch in itself. See now that that's wrong. You're going that way, so I'm yeah. going to let you go with that. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, with that's that, what I uh, to with. Do. But I would say Tampa Bay, Florida is what everybody <laughs> okay. would be looking at here. Yeah, I I have to go Carolina because uh, I I just want to see Brenda Moore. I, I want to see him do well. I want to see him take it to these teams. Uh, to be honest with you, the fact that he's only one point out, um, he does have two games in hand for Florida, one game in hand for Tampa Bay, uh, and he's only one point back. Uh, he's only lost eight games this year. I mean, come on. Um, that's who I think is going to be the surprise. We also think Florida, big surprise as well for them being there. Uh, I, I agree. Um, Drager has stepped up huge in Florida, and I would put Coach Q for for the Jack Adams uh, straight out Agreed. of the gates. Agreed. There wouldn't even be a question. Just give it oh, to yep. him. Yep, I, don't know about I agree. That. I agree. Colton, Colton in Chicago, I think. Gets okay, nah, but, you got to go to Coach Q right now. I agree. Chicago with makes the playoffs, but yeah. straight up, I have to give it to Quinville. But. Yeah, uh, I would like to see Carolina knock off the Tampa Bay's and knock off the the Floridas. That's what I would like to see. Okay, if I could see that, that's what I would really like to see. What's probably going to happen is uh, the the Florida Carolina series is going to be such a knockdown drag out series that the one who makes it at the end is not going to have anything left in the tank that right. that's going to have to face Tampa Bay. Because it doesn't yeah. really matter. I, I don't think it doesn't really matter if Tampa Bay goes against Nashville, Chicago, Columbus, or even Dallas for that matter. They yep. have proven that they can beat all those teams yep. because Dallas has so many games in hand because they missed of all the COVID and everything like that. But still, there's there's no way. Uh, I, that's what I think is going to be the series right there, the Carolina and Florida. And if Carolina can – win that series and come out and then do the same thing to Tampa Bay and or whomever, 
You know what I mean? Then that's what I would like to see for the Central. Let's also not forget, too, that Tampa is doing great, and they haven't even had Kucherov at all this year. And I think he's supposed to come back right when the playoffs start. So that makes them even more dangerous. Exactly what? I I don't know. Tampa has not impressed me so far in the regular season. But I think they've reached that point where the regular season, it's hard to get up for games a little bit. Once you start hitting playoffs like that and winning cups, we uh, teams quite often do that. They sort of sneak into the playoffs and then they turn it on. I don't think that's the best way to do it, but it seems to happen a lot. Okay. I mean, at, at the end of the day, too, it's all about getting hot at the right time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and those teams that were just talked about could be very well. I mean, all it takes is five games. Really, all it takes is five games because every game now is a four-point swing. So you win five games, four games in a row. That's eight, ten points. Bang, you're right there. You know, you're, you're, you know that's what I mean. So, uh, all right. So we're going to move on to the Honda West. Uh, correction, the Honda West. <laughs> I just couldn't resist that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a episode. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Couldn't resist. Uh, this, this here, I think, is a one of the most i mean aside from vegas and colorado this is one of the most competitive because you you go from three down and aside from eight and seven it's pretty much there's a, it's a you know a five horse race here for the, for those final two spots it seems like so we'll start off with perlo on this one since we did evan for the first one perlo what do you think about the honda west division here what do you think is going to happen with uh with this division here and, and the playoffs? Well, uh, I mean, first we're talking about what we like to see. Everybody wants to see Colorado Vegas. That, that's going to be a freaking amazing series. Uh, the, uh, incredible. That, that'll be one for the ages, maybe. Yep. Like, seriously. That, it that's is already. A, it's already yeah. must-see TV already right oh. now. Yep. And yep. Col- I watched Colorado last night against Arizona. I mean, that team is freaking insane. I cannot. Who's going to score that game? I, I don't know if I've seen a, nine, such a nine, nine uh, three or something, eight three or nine. I think three. I said six one on your show. Nine yesterday. to three. Oh, nine nine to three nine on that one. Three. Yeah, Colorado's uh, disgusting. Col- I don't know if Colorado, if Colorado can maintain this somehow, they might be the most dominant team I've seen, even maybe even more than Tampa Bay was. Uh, now that being said, is Tampa Bay played everybody? This is a—they're playing against just these teams this year, so it's kind of hard to judge, since they've only the only real threat for them is Vegas. Um, Minnesota's sort of fallen off right now. I'd like to see them turn it around, but they're a little too small. Uh, I watched them last night against San Jose. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, one thing, first, just on a side note, San Jose made sure their ice sucked last night. I know they did to <laughs> combat Minnesota's passing type game. And uh, I know they worked. There's, it worked. Uh, but besides that, I don't know if there's much more to talk about with this. I would love to see Los Angeles make it in because that's the team that I'd want to root for simply because of the way they play. They have so much heart that – um, uh, Los Angeles, Minnesota series might be all right, but Vegas, Colorado is what everybody's looking at here. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, E Money, uh, why don't you break it down here, man? What do you think about the Honda West? What do you think is going to be? How it's going to be? Where it's going to be? Right. And why it's going to be? Right. Um. So, like what Pearl was just saying there, everybody wants to see Abs and Golden Knights. That's a no-brainer. That's pretty much. One of the very few things I don't find this division as interesting as the other divisions, but that series would be so amazing. I would definitely have to sacrifice some sleep watching that and just <laughs> fucking up and dealing with it the next day because that that would be just awesome. You have two powerhouses. Uh, those are the only two teams in that division that are cupped con- con- cupped contenders, in my opinion. Um, I think whoever wins. Um, that series could possibly go to the cup for, for all we know. And mm-hmm. that series more than likely would not happen until the second round. It's looking like at the moment we would get Golden Knights and Wild in the first round, which that could be interesting. The Wild had been a surprise team. They got a couple good guys right in there, a couple good young players. Uh, Blues are sitting at the four spot, but then you have the Coyotes, 
Kings and Sharks a little bit behind them. Ducks are out of it. Their season's done. Yeah. Um, I think I think the Blues will hang on to that four spot. And the reason why is because I, I just kind of trust them more than the other teams. And they've been a pretty solid team in recent years. Uh, Coyotes haven't really shown enough for me. Kings, maybe. I mean, sh- Sharks, I don't really like their goaltending or their defense. So, to me, I would guess Avalanche, Blues, round one. And, um, yeah, everybody just wants to see Avs and Golden Knights. I just wanted to happen already. Yeah, yeah right? Like, how soon can we happen? Can it happen already? You know, <laughs> I think a lot of things are going to be depending on what happens here with the trade deadline. If some of these teams at that that break point level, that, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth level team, if they're going to be making any moves, if mm-hmm. they're going to be buyers and sellers. So if if L.A., who has a lot of bloody money, suddenly decide they want to bring somebody in, that could definitely take them over the hump and, and that could vault them past there. St. Louis been there, done that. They won the cup two years ago. Um, I'm really I really like St. Louis to try to hold on here. Um, they've been dealing with a lot of injuries, and they're yep. starting to get some of their players back. Parasenko you know, just came back, right? Yes. Yep. So that's, that's going to be nothing but helpful to them. Yep. Uh, Colorado, I think, is the team to beat in the United States. Well, we all talk about Tampa Bay and 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 everything like that, but you know, when you really look at it, you got to look at the meat and potatoes of it. And at a plus forty-seven. They're they're still even, you know, eight points ahead of Tampa Bay and their de- plus differential. That says a lot. Okay, that says yeah. a lot about their defense. That says a lot about their goaltending. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that's going to be the key, and that's why I think I, I would even have to call Colorado my early favorite to win it. All. I, I would I would agree with you. Uh, Steel, I think you make a lot of good points. They are definitely right up there in that higher echelon. And also, too, let's not forget, they started the season a little bit slow because they were dealing with some injuries. Grubauer, yeah, well, everybody's dealt with COVID, but uh, but the Avs have dealt with some injuries. And let's not forget, too, Grubauer is, like, right up there in the Vesna conversation. He's been on fire this year. And um, I'm just excited to see – how things play out yeah, with that's that. That's kind team. of funny because both of these divisions each have Vesna level uh, goalies in Tampa yep. Bay yep. and yep. in Colorado. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And Vegas and Vegas and are Vegas too. Okay, so that's the other thing too. So look, we Vegas has just been built the right way, I think, from the beginning, and they're yep. just perennial team, and that's just really cool. And I yep. like seeing them there. And I agree. They're a, a really good team and fun team to watch. But I just think Colorado, man, oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, oh, oh, that's, yeah, that's I, just I'm want, I just want to see Colorado and Vegas already. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see Barubi make it and get a shot. Um, I don't think Arizona's going to last. Nope. Um, I think Kings might potentially be sellers yep. um, at the trade deadline. So that – who knows? So yeah. – all right. They, they they say they're not going to be. They say they're right. going to be more. And they more have the so much cap space. You know what I mean? They're so going to be knows? more on the buying side. But... Probably. Okay. We'll whoa, talk whoa, whoa. about that trade yeah. deadline stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Which we've done ultimate shows for all of those trade deadlines. So check those out. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we did trade we deadline trade shows. Deadline. <laughs> yeah, we did trade deadline shows for each of the divisions on what we thought the, each team was going to do. So check that out. Yeah. All right. The Mass Mutual East, um, I, 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 look, I went on record at the beginning of the season calling the Islanders to win the division, and boy, howdy, they're trying. Wow. Okay. Uh, so um, the Capitals were a bit of a surprise for me. So since we were flopping back and forth now, we're going to start with the money. Um, now, we, we know that, that the Caps are your team. And and they are leading the division, and boy, they've looked really that's good this year. Stuff in the yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's my squad. Uh, wow, I can't believe you said the Capitals were a surprise. I figured for sure they'd make the playoffs. The Capitals have been a regular season powerhouse for God knows how long. I guess since Ovi arrived, really. Um, 
Yeah, that division was hard for me to call prior to the season started. I think we all knew that the Devils and the Sabres were going to be at the very bottom, kind of just completely being out of the picture. Sabres finally broke the losing streak against the Flyers last night. Um, I know I'm adding a little bit of salt to the wound, but just just saying what was going on there. Um, So it's looking like for the East Division, which obviously I love that division with my team being there, and then you have some good rivalries in there too. Um, It's looking like the Capitals, the Islanders, and the Penguins pretty much have solidified getting into the playoffs, like very, very close to just putting a stamp on that. And then that four spot, is going to come down to the Bruins, the Flyers, and the Rangers. Mm-hmm. So I find that very interesting. Rangers have been playing well as of late. Uh, Flyers have been in a little bit of a slump. Um, Flyers definitely got to make some moves at the deadline, trying to build up on their defense and everything, and hope Carter Hart comes back to what he was. He is 22 years old. I think he's 22. Um, and I, I think he can get back into it, whether it's this year next year. I still have faith that he's the goalie of the future for the Flyers team. Um, Bruins are interesting, too. They're like a really old team, but they still have a lot of good pieces. Um, Pens and Flyers, obviously, I'd love to see that. I think that would be awesome. Those two teams definitely don't like each other at all. I mean, there's so many fun matchups. I mean, my Capitals versus the Rangers would be interesting, too. The Rangers team is pretty fun to watch. They have a lot of good young guys, and in my opinion – Adam Fox is probably the most underrated defenseman in all of hockey. He just does a lot of the right things, and his offensive game is starting to pick up too. So I like that kid a lot. I think he's a solid player. Um, But what I think is going to happen, I think Caps will win the division. The Capitals love winning divisions. They tend to do that every year. So I'm going to say the Caps uh, finish out first. Then you get the Islanders and Penguins round one, which that would be an interesting series. The Islanders swept the Penguins, I think it was two years ago. And then uh, in terms of the four spot, it just just all depends because Boston needs to add more to their uh, goal scoring. Everybody knows about the top nine – or not the top nine. Everybody knows about the top line. um, But they need to just kind of get more depth just below that. And if they can do that, then they're a scary team. Of course, they have the goaltending – um, I might I might say Bruins hang on to that four spot and uh, Capitals and Bruins that, that'd be a good first round series and then hopefully at that point we could see Capitals Penn second round uh, or actually no forget that I want to see Capitals Islanders second round I can't root for the Pens to win I just feel dirty um, Capitals and Islanders second round would be so dope we, we could get our revenge from last year going up against our old coach and trots. And it's great that we have an actual hockey coach because Reardon was just pure garbage. Um, I really like what Peter has done with his team. Yeah. We're all look, uh, we we're both fans of Peter Laviolette. We thought that Peter Laviolette was, was going to put He's the truth, the, man. Yeah. We felt that he would put the, the capitals over the hump as well, too. Mm-hmm. Perlo, break it down for me, man. Give me some wisdom on on the uh, Mass Mutual Easter. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? What would you like to see? What What's going to well, happen? What I want to see is Char playing against his old team, man. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> that would be Washington, Boston. That's there crazy. you go. Yeah, that'd be cool. I would like that. That's yeah. what I want to see. Man. And I, mm-hmm. I want to see Boston make it for that reason. That would be epic. That'd be freaking epic. I love that. That's what I want to see on that division. However, that would mean my Philadelphia Flyers probably don't make it. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, that would not be good. But um, yeah. so with that, in mind, with that in mind, I really want to see, personally want to see, Philadelphia make it. And, of course, the Pittsburgh-Philadelphia. I mean, that's the that's the series, right? That's what you want to see. Uh the just it's the rivalry besides yeah. that i'm not i don't find the pittsburgh islanders all that sexy and uh, none, yeah. of, none of the other ones really but it's looking like that like, can happen in I round still one now. Watch. yeah i agree with you Perlo. i don't find that all that sexy at all because these are not the the yeah, why? yeah they're not the the most exciting games to watch no, in not. Pittsburgh. Yeah. but no, i can happen in the first round now i could anybody Islanders and anybody. Islanders are boring to watch. Let's face it. I love Barry Trotz. Uh, okay. All right. So 
we we know what you would like to see, and then we know what's really going to happen. All right. What's what's really going to happen? What's really uh, going to happen? Oh boy, I will tell you what. Um, I agree with you guys a lot on the reason why. I thought that Washington was going to be a little bit suspect this year and had them on the verge of making it. I thought it was going to be Islanders, Boston, um, Philadelphia, and maybe Washington or potentially New York. I had Washington at first. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I had, I had I, Washington. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I had Washington in there. I had Washington or Flyers in first, and then I had uh, the Penguins and the Bruins in there. Okay. So I think that what's going to end up happening here is the Bruins are going to make it because they have a couple of games in hand they missed because of their COVID protocols and everything like yeah, that. Good point. Oh, yeah, very deep. Yeah, um, they, they have a couple of games in hand. They do have 41 points. I mean, I if they continue to build on the wins and if they continue to play the teams like the New Jersey Devils and find a way to win – and continue to play teams like Buffalo and find a way to win and, and play games like against the Rangers and find a way to win and play games against Philadelphia and find a way to win. Pittsburgh has a much easier road uh, schedule wise, as far as their remaining schedule of the teams that they're playing. And so I think they're pretty much going to solidify themselves uh, in that third spot. Maybe, maybe, maybe surplant the Islanders. It all depends. I it think they'll take out the Islanders. Yeah, yeah. The Islanders tend to tied get, in the points. The Islanders tend to tire. Right, right. Yeah. And so either way, I still think you're going to see a Pittsburgh Islanders first round uh, a playoff between those yeah. teams. And quite honestly, I think it's more of an Islanders thing to lose than it is a Pittsburgh thing to win. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, that's hard to say. But, uh, Steele, let me say that I – would disagree with you that the Penguins would have the easiest road. I think the Bruins actually would have the easiest road because when I was talking to Joe on here a couple of days ago, he mentioned that the Bruins didn't even play the Sabres yet at that point or barely played it or barely played them. And I just looked at the Bruins' schedule. They play the Sabres six more times. Okay. That okay. that's got that's got to be like four to six free wins right there because the Sabers Pittsburgh's, Pittsburgh's up almost here. almost the same and they right. play New Jer- and they play New Jersey more. right oh right. okay I think yeah. right. that's why I said that right so, oh, okay okay yeah. okay it's crazy so, how right. easy their well, second half back, of both of those guys are. we look back when there was like twenty four games left of Pittsburgh. And of those 24 games, only 10 of those games were against teams like the Islanders or Boston or Washington or Philly. All the, most of all, the rest of them were against the Rangers, the, the Devils, and the, the, the Sabres. Yeah. And so uh, I, that's why I think Pittsburgh is either going to take over second place. Either way, I still think it's going to be a Pittsburgh uh, Islanders uh, first round. If yeah. if Washington continues to to win, then I I too would also like to see that. I I really don't think it's going to be in the cards for Philadelphia this year. If the Rangers can continue to build on what they've been doing, if they keep playing the Flyers and keep scoring eight nine goals a game, hey, I guess I could make it to far too if I scored that many goals. Gosh. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I really don't think Philadelphia is going to be in it. Uh, Boston, I think we're looking at the team that's going to be there. So Boston and Philly, or uh, uh, Boston and Washington for the first round. All right, that that's going to be pretty good to see that Chara matchup against his old team. The Islanders are no joke. No, and no. they they put it to Philadelphia last year and beat oh. them, and mm-hmm. they barely hung on to Tampa Bay. They play Tampa Bay very, very well, and they match up very, very well to the likes of Tampa Bay, okay, because of their defensive style and things of that nature. So don't discount that. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Last one is the Scotia North, and this division has just been, huh? It's been a head scratcher since pretty much day one. At least as far as I'm concerned, because we saw some teams jump out of the gates and were like, wow, we never saw that. And then they were like firing coaches. Wait a minute. Um, how does that happen? OK. <laughs> Perlo, you are our resident um, Canuck. Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not the resident Canuck. You're just the resident Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Okay. Yeah. So I actually, hey, one day I had to ask him, what is we a Canuck? Still, but we still call all Canadians Canucks. All right. E so, even though it is really supposed to be for specifically for the native correct. people. But and, we and still, we're offended, still calling I'm Canucks. Sorry. And if I offend it, I'm sorry. No, I'm, no. All right. No. So, but no, you are our resident Canadian. So break yeah. us down the Scotia North for us here, buddy. Um, well, first of all, what we'd like to see, I mean, this is, there's so many series everybody wants to see. Toronto, Montreal, of course, is a big rivalry. We won't see Edmonton, Calgary, because Calgary mm -hmm. is not going to happen for mm -hmm. them this year. No way. No way. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I want so, Alberta bad. Well, but, we've been uh, watching it all year. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick I didn't pick Calgary to make the playoffs and I didn't even think they'd be even close to what they are now. So uh but I wanna see personally, um, and I know there's gonna be a really good case for another one here, but I wanna see Toronto Winnipeg. I think that series is gonna be would be absolutely insane because you have two different styles clashing you got this deep winnipeg team that plays all four lines going against the sexy toronto matthews and everybody like that type team with uh maybe a little bit of suspect defense both of them have kind of on paper suspect defense and then this unbelievable vesna caliber hellebuck i don't know it's just like they're two different styles and not only that the cities are two different opposite polar opposites of each other winnipeg is this grassroots labor town you know nothing sexy about it you you see the winnipeg third the re reverse retros and everybody said that's so bland and so <laughs> you know like that's winnipeg They're and toronto's like detroit the, red wings one <laughs> and, yeah and toronto's like the exact opposites it's glitz and glamour it's the new york of of uh of canada okay. and uh they're going up against each other i to me i i, I just love that whole idea of those two teams i think it's going to be an absolute knockout drag out type type game i still think Toronto's going to add some grit i think it's going to make it even more interesting after the trade deadline because i think these are going to probably be maybe the two most active teams at the deadline that's going to change their teams so uh, add to their teams. I think that's just going to rock. But I know the next one. Uh, I'm going to save that for my friend E there because it's good. It would be really, it'll be really interesting if we see it too. But okay, that would be my one, and uh, that would be my one I want to see. Okay, all right. How's that for a segue, man? So E money, break it down, buddy. Let um, me see. Let me hear your, your north your north breakdown here. What you think? What's what you think is going to happen? Well, before the season started. I think we all knew the centers were going to finish rock bottom because they're just a terrible team and they still have a lot of work to do. Uh, they have a few good pieces. They're probably about two to three years away from being a reasonable hockey team. And um, I predicted the Leafs would win that division because the Leafs are a regular season team and then the playoffs, they completely collapse. We see it happen every single year. They like to lose in round one. Um, the series I'd like to see, and I actually think it will happen, Leaves and Canadians, that would be awesome. You have the history there. Uh, the Leaves are kind of a little different than the Canadians. The Canadians, from what I can tell, they're a little bit more uh, built defensively. You have Carey Price, who has that reputation. The Leaves have all sorts of awesome offensive talent. Austin Matthews is one of the most fun players to watch, and he'll more than likely get the rocket this year, or I guess him or McDavid. Um so that'd be a cool series. I really wanted Battle of Alberta, but that's not going to happen, obviously. I didn't have the Flames making the playoffs. The Canucks disappointed me this year. I really thought they would be a playoff team because they have a lot of good young talent. So I think the Canadians hold that four spot. The Flames and Canucks miss out. Uh, the Senators have been done since the season began, pretty much. It's really looking like... We'll get Jets and Oilers in round one. I think that'd be sweet, too. Um, another really awesome series to watch would be Maple Leafs and Oilers, just because of the whole Matthews and McDavid. Oh, yeah. Well, you have two of the most explosive players in the entire league. Both of them got drafted in the same year, McDavid being the first pick, Matthews being the second pick. Um, McDavid, in my opinion, is the best player in the world. Matthews is the best goal-scoring center in the league. 
Um, both of them are just phenomenal yeah. players, but I don't trust the Leafs to get out of round one. Yeah. I just I don't trust it. They have to prove it to me. I'm with so you. That's pretty I'm much you. that's pretty much my take with the Canadian division. I okay. think it sounds cooler than the North, but yeah. Uh, I agree. I, I think everybody would like to see the Battle of Alberta, but we've been watching it all year throughout the regular season, and it has not disappointed, not one little bit. It, it has been exactly what it should be and 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 was touted to be. So at the beginning of the year, this is what my prediction for the North was. The Maple Leafs, the Oilers, the Canucks, the Canadians, the Jets, the Flames, and the Senators. Okay? So I only missed uh, the Canucks – because yes. Winnipeg, we weren't really sure what was going to happen with Winnipeg because of their goalie situation with bringing in Hopi, the whole nine yards, how that whole that thing was going to work out, whatever, whatever. And, well, it looks like it's working out pretty good. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in awe of the Oilers as far as their offensive prowess. I think that that gives them more of a leg up, even on a more of a defensive type of team like uh, Toronto or even Montreal. Because let's face it, um, if I can just outshoot you and outscore you, then <laughs> it, it doesn't matter how good you play defense. Uh, I think with Montreal, with their coaching change and things of that nature, man, I I really I had much higher hopes for Montreal. Uh, I had them um, uh, just missing. Um, I thought it was going to be the Canucks. Uh, uh, or no, yeah, I have them making it. Wait, hmm. one, two, three, four. Yeah, I had them making it as the fourth seed. So I would like to see them maintain that. I would like to see that battle, Montreal and, and, and Toronto. I want to see that battle of playoffs because I think that's going to be a good marker for Toronto because of the way Montreal plays. They're more of a grinder team. They're not that high-flying offensive-type team like Edmonton is. You know what I mean? And, and that's going to be more of a grinding game and a tougher series, I think, for Toronto. I would like to see that series. And then I think whoever wins that series – it moves on and then goes against either Edmonton or Vancouver or or, or, uh, uh, or Winnipeg and then – you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I can't really tell you what's going to happen with Toronto because I don't – I too as well do not trust them in the playoffs. They have historically have made it and then can't make it out of the first round. Um, they have shown weaknesses and cracks in the armor this year as well. They are 5-4-1 and one in the last 10. So even though they are leading their division, they're only leading by three points. And, and, and you know what I mean? So – this is a more of an open division, I think, than any of the other ones. Yep. Because these teams play each other, you know, that that extra game more. So th this is a a much more open division, and these teams are a little closer. Plus the fact that Montreal has so many games in hand, yep. and if they if they win all of those games that they have in hand, just say against any one of them, they're right there. That's you know. Yep. 10 points on top of what they already have, that puts them right there tied with Toronto. I mean, you know what I mean? So Right. And uh, to add on to what you were saying, Steele, um, so prior to the beginning of the season, I thought any of those six teams, uh, the top six, of course, Senators not being there, can make the playoffs. So I had Leafs finishing first. Um, I had the Jets in there because they have some good players in the offense, and Hellebuck is an amazing goaltender. So I couldn't count them out of it. I right. had I had Canucks in there and I had Canadians in there, but I had Canadians finishing third or fourth and then just going on a run and making it to the uh, final four. I like to call it the final four because it sounds cooler than the cup semifinal. So I, I just kind of had that gut feeling. Yeah. And it could happen. It could, it's it could. still very They're possible. Still, the genius, still, I mean, so. hey, they got 39 points. They're still four points ahead of Calgary. And, you know, hey, yeah. anything could happen. And, and like you were saying, too, they have that grinding style. They have a good defense. I think they're pretty well balanced. And that grinding style translates more into the playoffs. Things get more physical. And in the third period and every time, the refs love to hold their whistles and not really call much of anything. Yeah. I got um, Winnipeg winning that division. Do you really? That's awesome. Is that, is that who you? Is that, my pick. Is that who you up. picked at the beginning? Is that who you picked at the beginning? Oh God, no. Okay, I, I have. I have. I have Toronto's going to lose it. They're a regular season. <laughs> I, I have Winnipeg coming out of the North in the playoffs. 
they are the best playoff team as far as I'm concerned right now. Uh, they they are, especially when they add to their defense this year. Watching their games, they're the closest team that I can see right now anyways to give Colorado a run for their money. Hmm. Like, they, they are playing such – uh, their third and fourth lines are absolutely awesome. Yeah. Appleton, Lowry, yeah. those kind of guys there – they're going to beat up on the Torontos. Like Edmonton played Winnipeg. I'm an Oilers fan. Forget about it. Winnipeg will destroy them. <laughs> oh, you can't count Edmonton them. out, though. McDavid and Dry Subtle might make I that. I don't numbers. care. Uh, no, no. They'll destroy them. I won't even come close. Yeah. Five. They'll win in five. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't, wow. it, wouldn't, even be, wouldn't even be close. They'd have a harder time against Montreal. All right. So one last thing, I'm going to ask you guys one last question here. Who do you think, uh, after all the playoffs are all said and done, right? So who do you think's coming out of each division? One team. Uh, yeah. 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 No. No. You only get to pick one team <laughs> for each division. Okay. So you you got your teams. Yeah, yeah. I got them. All right. E money. Right. Give me your team for the central. All right, so for the Central, oh, man, um, I, I got to go with the Lightning. It, it's it's too hard to go against them. And also, too, I want to throw one more thing in there real quick. I feel like our opinions could change within the next month, uh, depending oh, on yeah. the team gets hot, trade acquisition. Oh, yeah. And yeah, also, sure. too, I'm a firm believer that the President's Trophy is a curse. So whoever wins that, I'm not picking them to win the cup because that just hasn't happened in almost 10 years, especially if my Capitals do it. Because the Capitals and President's Trophies, that, 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 that doesn't correlate together very well. So okay. as of right now in the Central, I got to pick Tampa. They're kicking butt, taking names, and they don't even have Kucherov yet. So I got to pick Tampa. That's a key point. All right, Perlo, break it down for me, buddy. Who's your team coming out of the Central? Uh... I, every time I always got to scream, get a goaltender for Carolina. I still don't think they have their – but I like Nadelkovich, but he's just a kid. Uh, if they go out and get a Bernier or something like that, I'm going to say Carolina. I'm going to say Carolina. If they go out okay. and get a goaltender that can stop pucks on a, on a very consistent basis, I'm going to say Carolina. I'm going to put a, my sleeper, as you like to call them, yeah. is I have a feeling Nashville is going to go huge at the, at the trade deadline. Hmm. And as far uh, as they, buyers, yes, I think they're going to be buyers all the heck, and they could surprise. But uh, okay. I, right now, I'm going to go Carolina. I agree; it's hard to go against Tampa, but I yeah. think I'm just bitter. I'm just bitter because they've lost my, they've uh, they've <laughs> lost. Uh, I've lost on my picks too much of them this year <laughs> because they haven't been consistent. So forget it. I think there Carolina's is. a rock solid pick because uh, my girlfriend. And I and her dad, we did pools at the beginning of the year, and I had Carolina going, but she got to pick Tampa before I could. So I'm like, ah, Carolina's a good pick. I think he can win with Mrazic. I don't think he's amazing, but I don't think he sucks either. He's in that mid-tier. But Carolina has a lot of good pieces on they're, that. Yeah. Okay. So their defense is much is much better, I think, and they yeah. can take that away and make the goalies look much better. So yeah. it doesn't – that just goes to show you – uh, that the the level of goaltending in Carolina is not even you know, and look at what's going on there. So that that proves that their system and their defense is working really well there in Carolina. Yeah, I had Carolina slept on. Yeah, I, I had Carolina selected as as a team coming out of the out of the mm -hmm. Central this year at the beginning, and quite honestly, I, I too am a little bit afraid of their goaltending, and I'm going to go with Florida Panthers. Wow. Ooh, that's yeah. possible. It's going to be one of those three. I was until Ekblad got hurt. And now I'm oh, really yeah, that's bad. big. But, yeah, that injury was ugly. But that, that opened up $7.8 million for them. So they are probably going to be a rental looker yeah. potentially yeah. at the trade deadline. So that's why I picked mm -hmm. Florida. It wouldn't and surprise me. I, I right. want them to win it. Yeah. Also, too, let's not forget if Florida can get Bobrovsky to go back to his Columbus oh. Blue Jackets version, oh, yeah, yeah. that's hard to beat. All right. 
Ben, so ben now you see where I'm about. going there, E-Money, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm see just saying, if he, get, if he can get back to that Columbus level, yeah, buddy. that's a All very, right. very hard team to beat. Okay, yeah, so now I agree. Yeah. we're yeah. going to go We're gonna go with a Honda West. Uh, yeah. Give me your team. Uh, <laughs> I think we're all, all going to have the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, similar, ahead. Similar. Go, go ahead, E-Money, go ahead, give it to me. Okay, I mean, let's just scratch out the other teams and just have a dog fight between the Avs and the Golden Knights. I think the winner, I kind of have that feeling right now that the winner of that series at least goes to the cup. Both of these two teams have the right formulas to get there. Um, I've been high on the Avs for the past few years. They're a good young team. They're deep on offense. They're deep on defense. The goaltending's there. I also picked them in my pool, so I'm going to have to say uh, the Avalanche would would be in that uh, Final Four spot. There you go. All right. Perlo, who do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, unless if Flurry goes on one of his rampages in the playoffs, which he can do. Oh, that's true. I yeah. see that, that would be what would change it. But honestly, he's already looking like he's slowing down a little bit. He's an older, he's so old now. And they're, using him like, they're using him way more than they wanted to because laner has been injured. So yeah. that with that, and I just haven't seen a team crush like this since Tampa Bay. Back in uh, yep. back when they won the you know broke records there in the regular season right. that time, but I've got, I got to go with Colorado. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm going with um, the Anaheim Duck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, you're right uh, there. <laughs> I, I would really like to see Minnesota. Like, wait, yeah. I would really like to see Minnesota do it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, gotta gotta call the Avalanche on this one. All right. Yeah. Um, the East. Yay. All right. Um, I, gosh, E-Money, I think we already know who you're going to pick. I, I, It's hard not to. I mean, it's a little biased. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to it, but I got to yeah, pick but you have good, You have good reason to, though, because they are playing really well. Yep. Uh, every time Ovechkin steps out on the ice and scores a goal, it's a record. I mean, LaViolette has definitely wrangled that team perfectly. Yep. Um, I know the – the the how well Laviolette wrangles teams. He was a great coach for the Flyers for a number of years. So he's got the resume, man. He's been yeah. the three cups with three different teams. Has and won. He's won one. one. Yep. Mm-hmm. He won so, one with uh, was Carolina. That? Yep. Yep. Back in the day. Yep. First one. So yep. I think I I mean I think he'll be hungry for another one. And also too, like our window is like starting to close a little bit. We're the oldest team. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to close. We're the oldest team in the league, but we're young at goaltender. So yeah. it's not too, too bad. Um, Samsonov and VTech have been like a 1A, 1B. I don't yeah. really think we should do much of anything at the deadline because we're very thin at the cap. we got to re-sign Ovi after this year, and we have to re-sign Ron after this year, and I don't want those two going anywhere. Right. Okay. Um, so the Capitals, for me, the defense has gotten better as the year has progressed. Um, obviously, the offense is always going to be there with Ovi, Backstrom, Vrana, Oshie, yeah. et cetera. Um, we we have just about it all. We have the physical play. We're not the fastest team. Um, I think sometimes the faster teams give us problems, but we have the physicality with Ovi okay. and Tom Wilson. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got us coming out of the East. I got to I got to okay. taps. So all right, Perlo. Uh, what do you think, man? The East. Yeah, I mean, I'm pro- I got to go with Washington too, but. These Pittsburgh Penguins are driving me freaking crazy this year. Like there, <laughs> there is no reason why this team should be doing as well as as they are. They've had injuries. They lost players. Yeah. They got yeah. two of the worst defensemen that played on a, a regular shift last year in CC and Matthews. They added those added to, to their defense, and they're playing fantastic. Okay, Sullivan, maybe you got to give him some consideration. As That's true. Here. Because I would have given team, him last year. This team should not be here. It should not be here. And w- that's what's scaring me about this team is how much further are they going to go where you don't think they can go this yeah. year, the way they've been going. I have a feeling they could freaking do it. But uh, there's one thing about Washington. I love Washington as a team, but 
there's a, I don't know, there's something like a desire part of Washington that seems to lack sometimes, that Barry Trott seemed to fill that hole when he was there, and we haven't seen since. Maybe Labby can fill it and they do it here, but I would, not be truth, man. I would not be surprised if Pittsburgh took Washington this year. The Islanders last year that Varlamov had some time to rest. And Varlamov pooches. He does not have stamina for a goaltender. And I think the Islanders are going to fade okay. down the stretch and then not be able to do it. I have a feeling. I'm, 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 I'm going to say just because he picked Washington, I'm going to say Pittsburgh, even though it kind of makes me sick to my stomach a little bit. I think I threw up a little bit in my mouth there when you said that too. Hey, let yeah. me say this about Pittsburgh. They put Malkin on the IR. Food for thought. The best goalie tandem in March, Yari and DeSmith. Yeah. yeah. Now It doesn't make sense. but Right. And Yari just left the game the other day in the first period with an upper body yeah. injury, so they might be putting him on the injuries. Who knows? Well, DeSmith has been playing well. Honestly, right. on paper, Washington with Sam Sonoff should win this. For yeah. And I mean, also, too, you have to think about the history between the two teams. Uh, the Capitals have only defeated the Penguins in the playoffs twice out of like what ten or eleven times. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to think about that too a little bit. But yeah. I just have a very good feeling with Washington. We have a guy who knows how to coach, yeah. um, and I, I think he can get that team to the next level. If I had to okay. put some money on it or something, I would take Washington for sure. Okay, uh, I'm I'm still holding out hope for the Islanders. I, I think their style of play, I think they're going to come around. I think I just – just when I think I can count them out, they win. Yeah, and, that's true. That's uh, true. Okay, and, and they have that physical style of play that you need to win the Cup. They that's have, true. They, they, they were right there with Tampa Bay last year. They destroyed the Flyers. Um, I, 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 until I see anybody knock them off the top – that's who I'm picking could come out of the East. All right. All right. Last one, the North, and we'll go to our resident Canadian for that one first. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I already said, uh, I, I think uh, I think Winnipeg is the play here. I, I think so. Yeah. I, Toronto's going to be tough in a sense, but um, I, I'm projecting what is added at the deadline with this as well. Well, yeah. and if Winnipeg adds a top four defenseman to that team from top to bottom and on goal, there's nobody deeper. And we know how depth is in the playoffs, right? Um, I love the Toronto Maple Leafs top guys. Matthews can almost win by himself. He's one of the he's probably the best shooter in the game right now. Uh, he's killer. And uh, they did get some veterans to help out, you know, in the playoffs in Thornton and stuff like that. And there's going to be a lot of, to play for in that regard. But I just see a Winnipeg team that reminds me a lot of Colorado right now in the way that they approach the game. Their okay. aggressiveness. They just beat you down. Yeah. They beat you down. And that's what you need in the playoffs. Yep. So I, I think um, I'm going with Winnipeg to win here. Okay. All right, Imani, who do you think here coming out of the North? Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a surprise in a way, but maybe not. But I got the Canadians doing it. Um, reason being is I feel like I feel like in the playoffs, there's always that – there's always those one or two teams that just make a surprise run. Mm -hmm. And the Canadians also, too, pretty much have no shot at winning the President's Trophy. So they won't have to deal with the burden of that curse. Um, they have the goaltender and price there. They have some good offensive guys. They got a hard-nosed defense. I'm going to pick the Canadians. I also had them in my pool, too. So I, I've been pretty much high on them uh, throughout the year. I, I think they'll they'll go that far. I, I agree with you. I, I liked the Canadians to at least make the playoffs, but I believe Kakin and Yemi got suspended for 10 games or something now. Or what? He did? I think, I think I saw something like that where he's suspended or something. I can't remember if I was if that was true or not, but I know he was injured or something like that. And so I, I do like Montreal coming out of the north, but unfortunately I'm gonna pick Edmonton. Hmm. I, I I'm picking your team, buddy. 
<laughs> okay, I'm, I'm picking your team to come out. You know why I'm picking your team? Because I think that their offense is just too much for anybody, really. And and I every game that I watch of Edmonton and I watch them just blow past teams, you know, I, I mean, like I know our buddy Peyton on the radio – loves to uh, do the same thing that E-Money does with all of his uh, hot takes on what, what's going on with Edmonton, you know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, I really like what Edmonton's doing this year. I do like Winnipeg. I, I do think they have they were they are surprising me because I did not have them making it. Um, so I, I'm going with Edmonton. So hmm. that, that's what I think. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Man, we, we put together a pretty good show here, I think. We got oh, yeah. some we got some good insight. We got some good opinions. And we got some good things for everybody to sit around the, the water cooler and talk about and argue about and, and <laughs> comment on and all that other fun stuff. So, E-Money, thank you very much for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. It's been awesome. fun. It's been yeah, a blast. Uh, yeah. And so where, where where's your podcast now? Where can we get your podcast? And what's it, what's it called? Uh, it's called On the Money. You can get it on Anchor, Spotify, um, Apple. It's pretty much kind of like all over the place, but I, I just make my stuff through Anchor. So awesome! We'll have a link for you down there in in, in the in the description, so we can can get to e money stuff. Perlo, man, how can we get a hold of you? Where can we get all your great stuff? Well, you can watch me in well an hour. What time it is right now? Two. Uh, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, and my show. The Hawk, uh, Perlow's NHL, or the, the Perlow Wisdom Show, NHL show, uh, <laughs> three to five, three to five, five days a week. And we do a fun little thing where we pick winners and uh, who's going to win and scores and stuff like that and talk about yeah, everything man. that there is to talk about hockey. We do trades and uh, talk like we're doing right now. And we do it in a uh in a in a group set a group of people that whoever comes on and it's interactive i talk to everybody we have guests on we had peyton on the radio yeah yesterday. that was great Since yesterday yeah that. yeah i'm going solo today i think but we, sometimes we have john from off the wall all the steel flyers crew maybe you know maybe mighty might get on there we'll have we have all different types of guests on there and it's so much fun you know it's, it's really uh there will be frolic there will be there hashtag. Is, there, there, there will be frolic. Yeah, yeah yes, man. Yes. Well, you you can check out uh, all of uh, NHL Perla Wisdom stuff on the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Um, you yes. can f- check out his page and get all his contact information and everything right there. You can follow me, Steel Flyers, at Steel Flyers fifty two on Twitter. You can check me out on the web at www.steelflyers.com and be looking for a website upgrade and be looking for some new sponsors coming here real soon. So. Yeah. Be checking that out. Thank you all very much for joining us. Just remember, folks, stay strong, stay safe, and hang tough.